Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webcast. This is a webcast uh, that is part of the OSLC webcast series, an ongoing series covering a variety of interesting topics for the OSLC community. If you are interested in looking at past uh, uh, webcasts, they are all recorded, many have slides available, and uh, there is also a resource page for this particular webcast where you will find the recording at a later date. You can find all the list of presentations by going to oslc.co slash resources slash presentations. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I'm the Community Development, development Leader for OSLC, and I'm also the Operations Coordinator of the OSLC Steering Committee. So today I think we have an excellent webcast, and this webcast I think shows us um, I guess puts to reality the, the thesis, gives uh, some proof to the thesis we have that uh, OSLC is a great uh, solution for integration, and it's in fact a general uh, solution to integration for the general integration problem. As you may know, OSLC started very much in the realm of developer tools, and uh, of course is still used very extensively in that uh, field today. But uh, what we will see in this presentation is how OSLC is also being used in a whole other, uh, to solve a whole other set of uh, uh, integration problems as they exist in uh, systems integration field. So we are very fortunate to have Fernando Moraes, Moraes who is uh, from Icaro Technologies to be our presenter today. Fernando has uh, 11 years of experience in the systems integration industry, ranging from software development and solution architecture to IT service management advisory. Uh, more recently, has been responsible for the transformation of innovative technologies into products that fit customer needs. This is at Icaro Technologies. So, Fernando, I now give control to you. Okay. Please take Thank away. You, Ken. Uh, Good morning, everyone, uh, or good afternoon, depending on, <laughs> on where you are. So um, today we'll be talking about uh, system integration uh, uh, and OSLC uh, and data federation, right? So these are the main subjects we'll be talking about today. Um, just to, to start, I'm going to talk about what we do. Uh, like uh, I said uh, to Sean before, we are uh, for 11 years in, in, in for 15 years actually in the system integration industry. Uh, we have offices here in Brazil, but uh, projects worldwide. And basically, what we do is system integration, and we have some products also that address common issues of our customers, but we started in the system integration industry. And basically, just for you to know, the types of solutions we work with um, are the, we started with the systems and network management solutions, so event management, performance management, and then we uh, started growing our portfolio uh, through service management, asset management, security management, and more recently to business rules and optimization and analytics. Uh, my background is mostly from the service management uh, business unit here, but um, I have been talking with many of these guys of the other groups because currently I am at the R&D group at ECRO. We develop those products that I was talking to you before, and I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit one of these products and 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 how we used OSLC to to prov to give the ability to that product to interact with many more um, data sources. Uh, most of our customers they come from the telecommunication market, but we have uh, also in the financial services and ret retailer. Um, most of the, the slides are companies from Brazil, but you can identify some uh, worldwide brands like Avaya, Avon, and BT, and, and others. 
Um, and uh, in this context, uh, what our what is our client's top three concerns, uh, right? So mostly from the telecommunications market, but also from other industries. Usually they ask us to provide solutions that improve service availability, that, uh, and, and they want to quickly launch new services because of the competition. Uh, here in Brazil, uh, there's a lot of competition in the telecommunications market, and the service availability also is a big issue because of the regulations uh, on, the, on the service quality. And of course, uh, everybody wants to reduce costs and increase operational efficiency. Uh, so uh, in this context, why do we talk about data federation in OSLC? Uh, I'll start with a short story, how we got started with OSLC was uh, recently, uh, last year. Uh, a, uh, a few months before, we actually played a little bit with OSLC, but we didn't go uh, for, for just a proof of concept for one of our customers, but we didn't investigate in, in details. But then, at the end of the year, IBM invited us to try uh, OSLC and, and, and demonstrate the system integration capabilities at POST because uh, we've been working with IBM for, for a long time and they know that uh, we are in the system integration uh, for, for a long time. So we started learning OSLC uh, and built prototypes for both a data provider and a data consumer, so both sides of the, the integration using OSLC, and then we got surprised because we plugged our prototypes at POST this year. POST is a Tivoli uh, worldwide event that takes place in Las Vegas, for those that does not know, uh, early this year, uh, and immediately data from new, five new providers started showing up on our dashboard, which is the application that we use to consume the, the data from the providers. So uh, we are expecting uh, other providers to show up because we designed the application. But uh, if you if you take if you realize that there was no code involved to to uh, plugging these five new providers of information to our dashboard, no even configuration, no downtime. Our dashboard was running and and, and just plugged in and all the providers showed up. And most importantly, no bugs or issues. We were acquainted to, to developing integrations and uh, we usually have endless meetings with the other parties to set up the details of the integrations. And it was surprising because we didn't even know who would be integrating to our dashboards. And people start coming to our pedestal and, and saying, well, hello, how are you? Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, we are doing uh, part of the information of your showing your dashboard is coming from our system. So we didn't even need to talk to these people. Uh, and that was very interesting uh, from, from an integration <laughs> company point of view. So that's why that grabbed our attention. So, um, because usually we have uh, a lot of problems with the standard integration approach. So one of the integration approaches that we do for our customers when they request is data replication. But data replication brings uh, a few problems, right? So the biggest one is inconsistency. So if you need replicate data, uh, in the consumer side, usually we do not have the most updated information available. So you have two watches. You don't know which information is correct, and that brings problems to, to your um, operations. Also, you may have so much data that it's not even feasible to replicate all that data from place to place and with, because of the storage costs and things like that. And if the data changes very frequently, um, it doesn't make sense also to replicate the data. 
So, for example, if you want to, if you are troubleshooting uh, uh, an incident that a uh, service desk representative uh, is working on, and he needs to know the CPU usage of a computer system, uh, it doesn't make sense to replicate that data. So, replication will not solve many problems in the integration, uh, of, uh, many of the integration problems. The other approach is the point-to-point -point integration. Everybody knows about it. Uh, that was the standard <laughs> a few years ago, and that's why we have so many uh, problems. Usually we see those problems in the, in the telecommunication service providers. The amount of systems they have in the point-to-point -point integrations uh, makes it very difficult to introduce new services and, and when new systems are incorporated, uh, you need to change everything because the applications that are running already, they will not be aware of new providers of information, so you need to, to tweak everything, and that is costly. Of course, we have the uh, enterprise service bus, which is uh, a good alternative because we'll, not, we'll, we'll integrate all ones to the bus and, and other applications will consume the information, but uh, still doesn't have some uh, features that we can find in you know, our SLC, like this easy navigation I'm going to show you, and there's no data semantics. So that's why... Uh, uh, we, we, we are looking at uh, OSMC very, with very carefully, you know, very, with, with, with uh, a lot of perspectives. Um, based on the story I just told you about the, the polls this year, we started looking back at our own integration projects, and then we started doing some calculations. And we, we took a project we, we had with more than 10 system integrations that we need to build, test, deploy, and provide support and evolve that, those uh, plus than 10 integration across two years. And then we, we got to the figure that we, we estimate that we could have saved like $2 million if we could use OSLC during those two years with this, these 10 integrations. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a blog entry uh, showing the calculations so, so we can go into details about this type of cost savings. But also, we have the operational improvements. I, I come from the IT service management area, and uh, we know that there are some procedures of the service desk analysts, change analysts, configuration management analysts that definitely require real-time information for decision-making. So one of the numbers we have, based on our experience, is that as much as 70% of critical incidents uh, may be uh, due to lack accurate real-time information in the change management process. So people make the change planning without having the right information in hand, and then when they, they implement the change, they either uh, uh, have an in incident right away or in a few days or, or, or later. So this is lack uh, because of lack of information. And even if the, if, if the information is not enough for the change analysis to approve the change, suppose in, in this change process there is an approval phase, which is pretty common in the telecommunications industry, for example. Um, if the information is not available and they uh, can sell that change, there's a lot of rework to prepare the change again. So, uh, again, having the information, right information uh, available, it's key if you want to save uh, money and increase operational efficiency. And then how Data Federation and OSLC can help with that. So data federation is not a new concept. Those that have been working with CMDBs know what it is about. Uh, basically, we, we have to define identifiers for the entities, for the configuration items, but you can use federation for, for incidents, bugs, tickets, uh, whatever. Then you have an index where you can search 
that index for these entities. And then you allow the consumers to directly access the data from the providers. So federation is basically that. Um, you have the identifiers, an index that you can search, and then you provide the direct access. And what's the results we can get with federation? So you do not need to replicate data. You keep only the data in your system that you need. And when you, when you need the details or information that changes frequently, you go and request on demand. Okay, um, so we, we do not need to uh, create point-to-point -point integrations because you have an index. And because of your OSLC is open and it's an open standard, it's HTTP, you can consume the information from the providers very easily. And you can add new providers and consumers to the environment without change. Okay, so uh, ultimately it means that you each application will perform specialized management of aspects of the same entity. So suppose you have a computer system, you can have an application for inventory, another one for configuration management, system health monitoring, capacity planning, and we'll not be replicating data between them. So that's the beauty of the, the data federation. And so how OSLC helps with federation? So for those that doesn't know, uh, OSLC is, stands for Open Services for Lifecycle Life Cycle Collaboration. It's a community of people that um, there's a lot of experts uh, discussing common problems and solutions, and they publish specifications. Um, I'm not going to the details of OSLC here, but I'd like you to remember three basic concepts just for this presentation. One is resource. A resource is an entity defined by OSLC. It can be a computer system, bug, change, ticket, whatever. Another concept is the service provider concept, which is the index, uh, sorry, the, the application that has the details of that resource. So for example, the CMDB can be a service provider for configuration management information about that resource. Um, IDM, uh, ITM may be a, a, a service provider for health information about that resource. And then a third concept is the service provider catalog, which is the index or yellow pages that will enable OSLC clients to find the service providers and find resources. So the basic principles is, uh, behind the, the OSLC is that it, it's built on World Wide Web, web architecture, so it's very loosely coupled. There's a, a standard data representation, so there's semantics <coughs> on it. Use HTTP to, as, a, as a naming convention, so you can look up those names very easily. I'm going to show that in the demonstration. Okay, uh, you can link to to your other URI, so it's very easy to navigate. Okay, and so how it allows for data federation? So the key concept here is the service provider catalog concept. So it's the directory of providers and their resources. It will keep only the identification data about the resources. So the ID, the common key that we need to, to, to tell, well, I'm talking about this particular computer system, okay? And it provides a, a reconciliation uh, uh, ability, okay? So if you have a computer system being provide information being provided by many providers, this, uh, prov this service provider catalog can reconcile that information. And it is also known as, as registry. So it will have like a, a list of providers and a list of their resources. Another way of federating uh, uh, data using uh, OSLC feature is using the UI preview. So by using the UI preview, you can gather information from all the sources on demand, and you can actually show that in a, like a tab-like interface. 
And you can compare that versus launching multiple applications. So suppose you need licensing information and you need to open another application. Work orders related to a particular computer system, change history, health information. If you need to open several applications, you're, you're actually reducing the efficiency of your operations. Uh, and that in telecommunications is very critical. You need to you remember that the requirements from our customers, they need a service to be up and running all the time. So if a uh, needs then occurs, they need to be quick to identify the, the, the root cause. Uh, opening a lot of applications is not a good idea in this case. And we can do HTTP operations on the registry to uh, create a new resource, delete resources, update resources, uh, so the providers can, can use that operations to, to interact and, and, and also the, and the consumers. Uh, because it's on top of HTTP, you can query the registry. I'm not going to the details of this slide because I'm going to show this live, but you can query using uh, just an HTTP request, okay? So I'm going to show this, uh, how it works in the, in the demonstration. So what was our experience with OSLC? So before going to, into what we did, let me just talk about JAS for service management. This is a, a IBM's implementation of OSLC uh, compliant components. So there's a lot of, of components, uh, but we've been working mostly with the registry we also uh, have seen a little bit about the security part and the administration, but uh, for this uh, demonstration, we're going to, to use the registry only. And then for post this year, we had first thing we need to learn. So there is a learning curve, very short, one to two weeks. And if you have some background on RESTful web services and Java programming, that will help a lot. But it's not difficult to learn. And then we, create, we created an OSLC facade that took like three weeks. It's a Java application. I'm going to, to demonstrate that later on. And that for, we created that to expose a third party application based to consumers. So basically, we use the CMDB uh, from another vendor, and we communicated with the CMDB and brought information into OSLC format. Okay, so then you can say, okay, but then you need to a, a facade for every uh, application that you have. Well, we expect that. Uh, Step-by-step, step, other vendors and other applications will uh, be able to, to talk or speak OSLC. But if not, it's very easy to, to create this facade. And it's very reusable. It's very generic. And it can be applied to many projects. So it's not a big issue in our, in our opinion. <clears throat> um, next, what we did, we created the consumer application. Actually, we had a, already an application. We just created a widget in our dashboarding product that is OSLC aware. So in two weeks or less, we had our dashboarding application being able to consume OSLC uh, uh, information from, from other providers. So the final scenario for the demonstration at Pulse was we have the uh, CMDB the facade, and then other OSLC consumers and providers in the environment, and our own uh, consumer, which is the Advanced Dashboard application. And how it works? I'm going step by step. So we have a setup phase in which the provider registers itself on a registry, which is the IBM Jets for Service Management, it says, well, listen, uh, I have here, I, I am a provider of configuration management information, okay? And also, it registers the configuration items available. So
So it tells Jazz, by the way, I have here this list of configuration items that I have details about it. So if any consumer wants information about this, those configuration items, you can uh, ask me and I have that information. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes. Fernando, I do have a question in the chat and I think it's relevant here. And uh, okay. the, the question is, is the this facade that you're talking about similar to an OSLC adapter? Uh, as is mentioned in the OSLC documentation, um, and maybe, so in my opinion, yes, it is, a, it is the same kind of idea with an adapter you are using the facade pattern in order to uh, mm -hmm. enable another application with OSLC. So it's uh, correct. just another That's name correct. for the same thing. That's correct. It's yeah. just an adapter, okay? So uh, many of these applications, like uh, uh, the, the, the DMC, CMDB, and, and, and usually the, the Big vendors' uh, applications, they have many open, uh, um, open, uh, use open uh, protocols to communicate. So you can access the database, use web services, APIs, and, and other options. So the, the uh, facade is just an adapter uh, for those protocols to OSLC. Okay. Um, so if we go to the provider side, the, 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 the consumer side, so first thing the consumer does is it requests a list of providers. So advanced dash dashboards would say like, hey, please uh, give me a list of uh, configuration management information providers. So Jazz would return, hey, I have here five providers, uh, Ecros providers, Ecros provider, uh, ITM, TADM, which are IBM products, uh, OrbData, which is another business partner, uh, and MusalaSoft, and, and it will provide a list to our dashboard. And then uh, on, on demand, the dashboard will request, hey, give me um, the ID or the URL for this particular configuration item um, from uh, a specific provider. So Jazz will provide that link. And with that link, uh, the consumer can go directly to the facade in this case and request the details. So what the facade will do, it will request the details from, from, the, from the CMDB itself and will forward the details back to the dashboard using OSLC. So that's basically what we did. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, demonstrate that live. So what we have here is a, a dashboarding application. I'm, I'm not going to the details about it, but what we have here is a lot of alarms and relevant information for a telecommunications uh, company. It's a demonstration we have. And there are a few security uh, uh, incidents here related to my infrastructure. So, for example, I have a denial of service attack here, and for me to troubleshoot that, I'll just click that particular incident, and it will bring me a list of uh, uh, more details. So, in this case, I'm um, already using um, information from uh, the providers. Okay, so my consumer, the advanced dashboards, uh, given that key, which is the configuration item under attack, it, it is able to go to the providers and request, hey, give me what you have of information available about this configuration item in a UI preview fashion. So as you can see here, we have three providers. Uh, this is from uh, Musalasoft, another business partner, and this is change management probably from TADM. Um, at this point, our, prov our own provider, our own CMDB is not here. Why? I'm going to, what I'm going to do is uh, I want to show you a little bit about our facade. So we created just a little interface so we can see what's going on behind it. So this is our facade, this is our adapter that will bring information from the CMDB to the OSLC world. 
So here I have a few information about the registry and uh, provider, the authentication to, to Jazz and all. But most important thing is now I'm going to do what? I'm going to fetch the resources from um, from the CMDB. Okay. So let me come here again and recreate the resources. So these are the resources I've just brought from CMDB. So far, I only have this information on my uh, provider, on ECROS OSLC facade. What I'm going to do now is register them on uh, Jazz. So if I click here, oh sorry, I need to select them all and register. So now it is communicating to Jazz and it is showing me that I have a URI for each of my configuration items on on Jazz. So now Jazz is aware that I am a provider of information of these types of configuration items. So if I come back to my dashboard and click here again, it should bring me a, a new provider, which is the Configuration Manager. Remember, remember we had three, now we have four. The Configuration Management inf information is now available. So I have this uh, information from CMDB, which is the Configuration Information. And like I said, no downtime, no new code. We just plugged in into Jazz. So that that's how you can you can save time and and and, and money. And if I click here, and there's other other incidents with other uh, providers. So for this uh, second configuration, I think for the second computer system, we have, for example, our data which is another a business partner. We have discovery information. We have change uh, uh, management. We have, again, Masala Soft, configuration management, location information. And these are all provided automatically. Okay. So that, that's the idea. Um, I'll get back to the presentation. Um, Just... Uh, that, that, yes. was, that was very good, uh, Fernando. Um, I do have a question from the yes. chat, though. So how okay. do you manage authentication and permissions to access resources? Okay. Um, in this uh, demonstration here, we, we uh, are in an environment in which we connect to, to Jazz, okay, and Jazz will list for us all the configuration items that are registered. But once I go to the provider itself, there is, uh, for example, you can use a single sign-on mechanism that it's, I was discussing with the Jazz uh, development team, and it's uh, very elegant. So you can, you can single sign-on, and you can send credentials, or you can use tokens, and, and based on your role, you can have access to the information or not. So that's that's how it works. Okay, so we can go in, into more details uh, in, in, by email, but that's that, there is a security mechanism behind. And, and, and Jazz has a whole security module to handle that. So, so all okay. the um, all of that is effectively handled by the. Um, the platform that, that you're connecting yes. to is a Jazz for Service Management. Okay. Yes. yes. Very good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, well, um, basically, in, in terms of demonstration, this is what I have to to say. And uh, as a summary, um, I would say that federation allows for you to create integrations. In, it's much easier, much quicker. The development costs are very low. You saw that we, in two weeks or three weeks, we had developed all this environment, and it was not a big team. It was like only one or two guys, junior guys. Um, they managed to, to develop uh, all these integrations, 
And, and also, if, if you think about a support change management perspective, the costs will be much lower because you're talking about standards, not pro proprietary um, protocols. So my advice would be if people uh, are planning to build new integrations, uh, consider using OSLC. And IBM is doing a lot of work. If you, if you pay attention to the new releases of the products, they are being shipped with uh, capabilities, OSLC capabilities. There is no license associated with that, so that's for free. And it's an open community. If you want to participate, it, it, you, you can. You, you can just uh, make your own uh, propose, your, 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 your suggestions, and, and discuss in, in that community. So uh, it's very nice. That, that's my, my recommendation. Uh, for you guys that work with integration. Um, so, Sean, I don't know if you have other questions. Right. Well, uh, thanks again, Fernando. This was uh, an excellent yeah. presentation and uh, actually great that you, uh, you delivered it so concisely. I, I think you covered a lot of wonderful things, so well done. I, I will open up the lines now for, uh, for questions on the phone. And we'll take more questions in the chat, uh, just as it may take them. Um... All participants are now in interactive talk mode. It, it may take a, a little while for uh, questions to come up. Um, Fernando, if people were going to get started, um, mm -hmm. you know, where, what kinds of things would, uh, would you point them to any additional kinds of things? Do you yeah, sound helpful? I have, a, I have a few slides here. Um, well, how we started, we started with this document, which is a tutorial. It's an online document. You can just point to this URL, and it's very nice. We started with that, and then there is another tutorial in the um, wiki, uh, OSLC wiki, which is the integration tutorial. We went through that, also very nice. Um, in the developer works, this is IBM uh, website, but there is a um, uh, community for just for service management. There is a wiki, and if you navigate to, to registry, and there is a getting started, and over there you can find a lot of videos and and and, and tutorials, sample codes. There is a there is a um, uh, provider, a generic provider source code, which is very helpful. We use that to accelerate the development. Um, and also there is a blog in, in the same area. You'll find some videos, very good videos, uh, showing how you can, you can do things with OSLC and Jazz, and, and, and that, that I would recommend uh, uh, for, for people to get started. I think that's it, Shana. I think. Shan, can you hear me? Oh, ah, yes, I can. I see I was speaking on mute. Sorry. I, okay. There are uh, there are certainly some more questions in the chat, and I will get to those. I would also suggest, if you're looking as an implementer to do some implementing, that you take a look at the resources available in the Eclipse Leo project, or if you're a .NET yeah. developer in the um, OSLC for NET uh, project on CodeFlex. And um, Eclipse Leo, or, or the OSLC for that, uh, they are um, a library that helps. There's sets of libraries that help you write your code more concisely, um, handling a lot of the underlying communication protocol and, and bringing things off the wire into uh, your objects in a, uh, in a standard way. There's also um, test suites that can help you uh, validate your your providers or the providers you're working against and samples and reference implementation. So it's it's a really great way to get started as well. And that is uh, again Eclipse.org/lyo uh, would be a good place to start. So I've got a couple questions in the chat, and I'll just start with the first one. Um, so looking back at the demo, we did talk about how um, the 
security and authentication came from this uh, Jazz for Service Management platform. Uh, what other uh, basic services that we saw in the demo came from that platform? Okay. Um, we have, uh, basically, we have the uh, administration where you can, very similar to what I showed you, uh, you, can, you can see the list of providers, you can see a list of um, resources registered, you can see the reconciliation uh, jobs, the results, this is the administration part. We have, they have also the a dashboarding tool, which is different from the dashboard I showed you here. There is a, a dashboarding application that you can use. Um, there is the security aspect. Um, uh, there is five, I guess. Let me get back to the slides here, just, just a second. Uh, and the, okay, in the reporting, right. And the registry, of course. So these are the, the, the five services. Um, I don't know if there's anyone from IBM that wants to complement, but um, these are the ones we're aware of and we, we've been using. Okay, thank okay. you. Very good. I, uh, um, good, and that answered the question well, it, it looks like, too. The, the second question we had in the in the chat is um, is about performance. So, in terms of the performance that you see here, how is this what you're doing using OSLC and linked data? How does that compare to traditional integration? Okay, if you compare it to web services, which is one of the uh, most common uh, integration mechanisms nowadays, it, it's pretty similar. It's pretty similar, uh, and 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 you know it, we we didn't notice uh, uh, a problem with uh, performance. Uh, we of course we didn't uh, do uh, huge tests, but anyway, if if you're going to a web services uh, platform and you get into massive uh, data exchange. We have doing that. We have been doing that for our customers in the telecommunication markets, and like they have millions of calls, uh, and, and they have to handle that in the web services. But you need a, you need a, a good infrastructure to handle that because of the volume. So if you compare to web services, it's very it's, it's very similar. Okay, uh, so so. That's that's what I can say about performance. Right. Based on what we have tested. Yeah, and I, and I'll just add. I, I guess if you're looking from some experience um, that I, that I've seen, if you're looking at say a, a, a another way that you might do integration is uh, using a data replication, a synchronization mm -hmm. uh, type of pattern, and of course you you now are not doing that at all. So Every um, everything that you, all that power and uh, resource that you had to do, handling the synchronization and the copying of data and figuring out whether you know which copy was the uh, was the newest and merging uh, whatever you might need to do in terms of a very complex replication or um, synchronization system, you you avoid all of that. And so we had at IBM. Um, a, an effort that is still ongoing, but is uh, starting to, to sh show some some good results. Um, and there actually is a previous webcast uh, about this that you may be able to uh, find if you look through the uh, uh, oslc.co slash resources slash presentations, and the link was shared in the chat near the beginning, um, that they were able to reduce uh, by replacing with an OSLC strategy, a linked data strategy. Um, they were able to reduce the number of systems that they needed to use to support the integration. This was for basically uh, customer support, uh, handling all the uh, problem requests, all the requests for enhancements, and uh, you know, managing the relationships with the, the clients in between the um, 
customer service professionals and the uh, developers actually working to solve these problems or, or add the features. Um, so they were able to, to use fewer systems and spend less time um, on the administration of those systems as well. So this is a fairly large scale um, uh, environment for, for this type of system. IBM is a very large company. So that, uh, that is good. Now, there's, um, there's, there's another question here, and uh, I'm guessing, uh, Fernando, and I, I may look to uh, someone else from, uh, uh, from Tivoli who is on the phone. Uh, to jump in here as well, because I, I think maybe it is not, um, it may not even be something that you've heard of. Um, so the question is this, have, have you looked into implementing Realm? And uh, it, Realm is a recent contribution, or uh, sorry, so Realm is Rational Engineering Lifecycle Manager, and, it, and in that case it may not be relevant to, to what you're doing, it's more a software and systems engineering uh, tool that assists that assists uh, developers, but as part of Realm, there is uh, uh, something called TRS Tracked Resource Set that has recently been contributed to OSLC and is being worked on right now um, and refined. Um, and I guess one of the things that you can then do with uh, with Tracked Resource Set, one of the functions that Realm provides as a as a product is that um, you can do query and reporting across a, um, a range of engineering systems. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter where your, um, your defects, they could be stored in multiple systems, even for a you know, single project and your requirements are somewhere else and your testing data is somewhere else. You could still search across all of that and uh, build a report on that. So I'm guessing perhaps, Fernando, that this is, everything I was just talking about, about Realm and um, TRS may be new to you in a, in a coming again from the engineering, uh, systems engineering domain uh, as the foundation, but uh, TRS and what you can do there may be applicable. So is that something that, say, I'm altering the question a bit, do you see a need for, or is there, is there a service that may already be included in um, the Jazz for Service Management platform that, that provides something similar. Okay. Well, um, it, it's actually it's not my my domain, uh, but I'm I'm happy to hear because we have uh, some some customers that wanted us to integrate the IT service management uh, applications into the actually engineering and, and software development applications. And, and actually, Jazz came from 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 that domain, and and it's very nice when you have a, an incident, and then you have a problem that is related to a source code, source code, uh, bad source code, and you need, you need to fix that. Then you need to relate it to that problem. You need to open a defect, and and that that is good to hear that we're going to have that. But um, I'm sorry, that was a question for me in the, in the end, or, or <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a lot of explanation and then a then a bit of a question. Um, okay. <laughs> so I, 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 yeah, I didn't get a question. So I, I mean, I think really the uh, the question is about uh, it comes down to the the ability to search um, and report on on data that is. You know, across a whole bunch of different okay. systems. Uh, okay. So, so being able to do that at a higher level, not uh, not only being able to see a report, say based on the data inside um, inside a single tool, like you you have given us the example of adapting BM, uh, BMC, was it Atrium? Yeah. Um, so now you could see data. Um, you could have a report on data on everything that is. Say that you know in your your own tool yes. or in your your interface. Yes, the, the nice thing about OSLC is, is that it allows us to do things like that. So, for example, here is again uh, I'm showing on my screen the our our uh, provider the facade. So I'm going to show you some information about the registry, and then everything is URIs, right? So 
uh, with uh, this link, I can ask the, the, the Jazz to show me the list of providers. So, so it's a list of providers available. And in the same fashion, I can go and request the list of resources stored here. So again, I have a list of, of resources. Each of these lines is related to a, a resources. And then I can do nice things like, for example, you can, you can use uh, where clauses, for example. Instead of bringing me all the resources, just bring me the resources where the manufacturer is VMware. So I just click here, enter, and the, the list is short, right, the short list. So this is the kind of reporting that you can do. Of course, here we have only the ID, but then you can build much richer reports if you, can, if you go to one of, each of one of these URLs and get the information you need to do the report. So uh, definitely it's, it's a very good idea. I think even just the example that you're showing here, uh, Fernando, of how you're um, you know, basically just getting the raw data by using your web browser is one of the uh, great advantages to an OSLC-based integration. Um, yeah. You can actually test it out using nothing more than a web browser. Um, and this can be quite helpful if you are actually trying to build some kind of report like that um, and then even into debugging. Very, quite interesting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting, uh, getting quite <laughs> many more questions coming in at this time, but um, I see that we're only a few, six minutes away from the, the top of the hour. We'll keep going, but when, uh, uh, when, when time is up, we will uh, then ask you to start posting questions onto the OSLC forum, and you can reach that by going to oslc.co slash forums. So the next question is, um, I, I, I hope I, I hope I capture capture this right. So, um, the, so is the data semantically federated inside the registry, um, or is this something that the client tool has to take care of? You know, figuring uh, out what what goes to where, what's associated. Okay. Uh, uh, in terms of semantics, you have uh, some what we call shapes. So, for example, uh, OSLC uh, community uh, will define what what is a computer system shape. What is exp usually we have as attributes for a computer system. So, for example, host name, uh, um, UUID, uh, memory, amount of memory, disk size, and things like that. Maybe uh, attributes of a computer system, and that's it's uh, like a shape for the computer system. And if if you are communicating with um, a provider or, uh, or, or as a consumer, uh, uh, you, you need to, to give uh, at least the basic information. You need to know basic the basic uh, attributes, like for example the the key, right? All right. So, for example, usually we, we use the UI UUID as key. So you, the the client must be um, aware of this. Uh, key in order to do everything that I, I did here. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't be able which field is key, which field is not. So, uh, yes, the, the client must be aware at, at, at least the basic uh, basic information it, it needs to be to be aware. But it's an XML. Everything is XML here, so it's very very easy to to handle that. I can show here, I guess, uh, computer system. Let me see. Um, okay, I'll open the collection. I have a collection of things. Yes. Um, so if I get that URL and open here, it will show me uh, a URL. And you can see that you have model and you have the system board UID. There is the IP address. But the consumer doesn't need to know everything about it. It just needs, for example, the system board UID for the key. And then the provider will give all this information. But 
All this XML has been defined. The computer system is well known shape. And you have shapes for bugs, uh, change requests, and, and, and everything else. Right. Okay. Yeah. And all those shapes, as you see at the top of this XML, are uh, defined in RDF. Uh, Correct. And and it, that can be so. RDF XML is a serialization format. There exist other ones, um, including. Uh, there's it, you could put it into JSON. You could put it in something called Turtle, and uh, of course you could you could also have this kind of thing displayed as HTML if that uh, if that made sense for you as well. Well, I um, see we're we're just. Uh, we're really just at the end of time, so those adding new uh, questions at this time, I'm sorry, please go and uh, take a look at the OSLC forums and uh, post your questions there. And um, uh, Fernando or others will, will come by to ask them. Uh, Fernando, thank you so much for this uh, wonderful okay. presentation. Thank you for everyone who, uh, who joined us today, asked questions, and uh, everyone who's also uh, watching this on a recording later on. Okay. Thank you very much. Participants are now in listen-only mode.